Hi, my name is Lori Dickman. Welcome to Quilting with Lori. Today I'm going to be sharing with you how to finish the scalloped border using the crumb fabric that we've created. And it's a really simple technique, so I hope you'll join me. This is part three of my crumb quilt series, so if you have not yet uh, seen part one and two, make sure you go check that out. They'll take you step by step on how I've put together the entire medallion quilt how we've made and appliqued the fabric for the, ap the applique um, orange peels, how we've done the sashing, and how we've done the hexes. So check those out. I will have links for those videos below, so make sure you watch those first, and then come on back to this video. The quilt that we are working on here, it's, it's a traditional medallion, but it has kind of a contemporary look to it, a contemporary feel mainly because of the um, background. There's a lot of negative space that I'm going to have a lot of fun in when I'm doing my quilting. But um, we've done some beautiful motifs with the orange peels, the sashing, and the hexes. And that was great. Lots of fun. Very, very simple quilt to put together. But when you are working with crumbs, you are working with a lot of bias. So you've got to be very, very careful that you're not stretching and pulling things out of kilter. Make sure that every section that you put together is squared from the center medallion to the sashing to the borders. Make sure everything is square. Measure, measure, measure. Make sure everything is exactly as it should be and you will be so much happier with the result. In the first video you saw where we um, made the hexes and the orange pills and I taught you how we put those together, how we applique, we fused them and then we applique them to the quilt. And then I also shared with you how to use adding machine tape to create your sashing. It's a wonderful way to create sashing with crumbs. And I love to use that technique. And so that's how we did the inside sashing. But for this outside uh, scalloped border, we're going to use muslin. I want to do a, instead of the paper piecing with the adding machine tape, we're going to do a muslin, a foundation piecing for the scalloped borders because we want that to be very secure. We do not want it stretching. I will also do a stay stitch on um, both ends, the pointed edge as well as the straight edge of the scalloped border before I put it on the quilt. We want everything to be nice and straight. Now let's go to the tabletop where I can show you how to create your scalloped border. It's a very easy technique for you. You don't even need a ruler. Um, a straight ruler you're going to need, but you don't need a curved ruler. So let me show you how this is done. So here we are at the tabletop and um, I decided instead of doing a scalloped border that's curved, um, you would need a ruler of some sort or you would need to be able to really uh, make some nice um, even um, curves if you are um, going to be doing a, a scalloped border that, like that. And I thought, you know, most of my viewers may not even have a, cute, a curved ruler, so I wanted to come up with a border that's got the scalloped feel to it and look to it, 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 it but yet it's all straight lines. And it's a really simple technique for you to accomplish that. Now this is making scallops of or waved edges by Eleanor Burns. Um, she has a video out there. She has a ruler that you would use. I don't know if the picture of the ruler is in here or not. There's a top picture of it, but it's really a great uh, PDF. There's the, the picture of the ruler. I will attach this link so that if you do want to do a true scalloped border and if you do have her ruler or some other ruler that allows you to do scalloped borders, then uh, this is a great option for you. So I'll try and remember to link this PDF. It's a great one. But today we're going to do something very simple. So what I, I told you we're going to get muslin and we are going to crumb our muslin fabric to create our um, uh, outside edge, our scalloped edge. So what I have done is I've measured the outside edge of the border. And this last border is 53 inches that I had to, uh, that I'm going to be making crumb fabric for. So this muslin is two and three quarter inches, no, excuse me, it's two and a half inches wide, and I've measured it 53 inches long, and I cut it then. So that's what I have is 53 by two and a half, because that is the measurement of my, my quilt, um, this last border that I need. And I have simply taken this muslin, I folded it on itself in half, and then I have folded it in half again, so it's now quartered, and I am going to fold it one more time. So here we go. So now this is where we're going to create our scallop, and in this my case, it's going to be a pointed scallop. 
and if uh, you measure this, this one is six and three quarter inches approximately in um, length from fold to fold. These are folded edges down here, and these are folded edges here. So half of six and three quarters is about three and three eighths. So I took a pencil and my ruler, and I came in about three and three eighths, and I marked a tick mark there. And for my scallop, I only want it to be one inch deep. So I went in one inch here and I made a tick mark there, one inch deep here and I made a tick mark there. So I had three tick marks with a pencil. And then what I did simply to uh, create that, you could either just use your rotary cutter right here and cut this, or if you're not comfortable, you can go ahead and draw the line as I did here. And so I'm just lining up my ruler between those tick marks from the center here, from the center there. And that creates my point that I'm going to need for my scalloped border. Now I'm going to get rid of these two pieces here. I'm going to stand up so I can cut all the way through it. There we go. So there's that. And there we go. So here is my border. When I unfold it, I have a scalloped border. It's a pointed scallop border, but that is great. That's what I am going to use. So I'm going to go ahead now and crumb this. I'm going to start at one end, just like we did with the sashing, and just keep laying pieces there. I've got to get my crumb fabric out. It's in a box. I have to bring it over here to the tabletop. But I'm going to start at one end and just keep on going all the way down till this entire piece of muslin has been crumbed, if you will. So I have my muslin here. I'm going to start at one end. And I have some pieces of fabric that are quite large. What I could simply do is cut some of this apart and use it, or even rip it apart if I choose to do that. And then I can actually um, use it on my fabric. So I'm going to start at the end. And the first piece, and another thing that I do with, with my um, sat, my border, my outside border here is I make sure that I have my iron next to me and I've been pressing as I'm going because I want to make sure that everything lays nicely on this outside border. That's very important. So let me get rid of some of the threads. So I'm going to start at the end. I think I'm going to make sure that the red is out there on the end. I am going to simply tack it down at the very end here. And um, I will be trimming all away the excess later for right now. I guess I could probably just get rid of some of this since there is quite a bit here we don't need. All right, let's grab something else. Let's grab this blue one right here. And whenever you're adding a new piece, make sure that you add enough that it will cover everything. And so I am going to just add this blue one right there. I'm lining up the edges, bringing it over here. And I'm using about a quarter of an inch seam allowance again as I'm sewing this. It's basically like strip piecing, but we can also use some of the crumb fabric that we have put together. So right now we are seeing basically some strips. You could, um, this was an orange peel that I had made. I could certainly um, use this. And in order to do that, I can just cut away a little bit of that. And I could add this to the end right there. So I'm a straight seam across the muslin. All right. And I will press that. I'm going to take that to the iron and press it. And then you can, um, right away if you'd like, just loosely cut away some of that excess just so that you know where you are on the other side. 
sample. So that I can use at a later time. All of these pieces, or many of the pieces that I cut away, I'll be able to use possibly at another time. So um, we've got that much going here. Now this is kind of wonky here, so that's not going to work very well. I'm going to straighten it up by just cutting a straight line. Save that for later. Let's put something pink in here. Why not, right? We are using everything that we have. It's a very colorful, and in that regard, probably a little bit more contemporary in the crazy craziness that we're all of the colors that we're putting in there. And we'll just continue working our way on down this sashing, or I should say the border, until it's completely crumbed. Just being careful that now that one's not going to work. It's not tall enough. I've got to make sure that I have fabric that'll cover that point. So I'll put that one right there. So if you've seen um, video one and two, you've seen how I've gone through and done this. And basically I'm gonna continue crumbing this whole thing. Then I am going to stay stitch all the way around the outside edge of that muslin border. I'm gonna stay stitch about an eighth of an inch from the edge. And then I'm gonna trim away all of the excess crumb fabric. So I only have the muslin and maybe an eighth of an inch all the way around. After each time that I lay a new strip, I make sure to trim that um, seam allowance so that it's definitely a quarter of an inch because sometimes I have some weird wonkiness under there and I don't need that excess fabric in there. This is a nice even one right there. But uh, now I wanted to use these two pieces and they neither of them was long enough by itself. So I made a new piece. As you can see here, I'm just gonna get rid of that crazy little part. I don't need him. And I'm going to finger press this open, and now I have something that is long enough that I can put on here. But I don't think I want blue right up next to blue. So let me find something else here that I can... Let's try this one. Let's get rid of some of these threads. What I love about crumb quilting is that you are simply just using up everything. You can put tiny little pieces together to make a big enough piece that will work. And um, I love it. I love being able to just use up all those itty bitty pieces in my stash. All right, so there's that. And now this one will be big enough that I can put it on there. And you'll notice, I'm gonna press it real quick here. You'll notice that it's a little curved. Um, the edge is curved there, so I'm gonna make sure when I sew my seam allowance, I'm going to sew a straight seam. I'm not gonna follow the curve. I'm gonna sew a straight seam. And trim up this excess just a little bit here. Get rid of that. And then I can press this open. And that'll be ready to go. All right, and I'm just gonna keep continue working until this entire muslin is covered and, with crumb fabric, and I haven't got far to go. All right, I have everything crumbed. The entire piece of muslin is crumbed. Now I'm going to stay stitch the entire outside edge of the muslin. I have uh, changed my stitch length to 4.0. It's more of a basting stitch. I'm at about an eighth of an inch from the muslin edge. And I am simply going to follow the edge all the way around. Once I have it completely stay stitched, then I'm going to um, trim away that outside crumb fabric. All that excess stuff that's hanging around there. We don't need that. But this stay stitch uh, step is very, very important. I'm going to continue all the way around and I'm going to come back and do the bottom straight edge as well. So the entire piece of muslin 
will be stay stitched. I'm simply going to use my ruler and I'm going to trim away the excess crumb fabric. I'm probably going to leave about an eighth of an inch around the outside edge of the um, muslin. And just get rid of all this excess fabric that I don't need. Some of this is so tiny. Um, you can use it for confetti quilting or you could um, stuff a pet pillow with that if you make up a pet pillow and hang it on your cutting table every couple of months, your pet could have a new pillow because you'd have it stuffed in with a lot of this tiny little pieces. Pet pillows work much nicer for animals if they're filled with small, small pieces instead of chunks of fabric. Chunks of fabric make the bed lumpy and not very pleasant for the animal to sleep on. So I'm going to go around and do the bottom as well as the points. I'm going to trim up all of the points as well. And when I'm done, I'll show you what it looks like. All right, I have finished. And I've trimmed it all away. There's about an eighth of an inch or so all the way around the muslin. And um, so I've got all that excess crumb fabric trimmed away. This would make great um, confetti quilting um, stuffing or stuffing for a pet pillow. So you can use that for either. There's a few pieces that I pulled out that were still large enough to actually um, use for my crumbs. So I'm going to put this in my crumb container and this can be either confetti or pet pillow stuffing. So now my uh, scalloped border is ready to go and I can attach it to my border, the last border that I have to put on there. I've got three of the borders already attached and this is the fourth border. And what I'm gonna do is fold it in half and mark with a pen where the center of this is. So I'm just gonna mark that and then I'm going to do the same um, one more time. I'll quarter it and mark with a couple of pens. Let me grab my pens over here so that um, I know exactly where those center sections are. That just makes it a whole lot easier when I'm attaching it to the quilt that everything is put on there nicely. I will also quarter the last border of um, my quilt with the center as well as these quarter marks here and um, then I'm going to pin it on there, attach all, match all the pins and I'll be ready to sew it on. It's pinned on. I'm going to take it to the machine and sew this on with a quarter inch seam allowance. I'll be right back. As you can see, this is a very simplified version of putting on a scalloped border. It's giving you the illusion of that. It's a pointed scalloped border. There are some interesting things going on here. There are formulas you'd use when you're doing a true scalloped border on, on the corners, but we didn't do that. We simply um, created um, the templates for the pointed scallops that we made, and they've gone all the way to the edge. So we kind of had this little bump here. You could, you know, leave that just like that if you wanted to, but on the other two sides, what I had done was I grabbed my um, 45 degree angle here on, on this ruler, and I went out into the corner from that about an inch and a quarter. So I've got this line parallel with the border and I'm out about an inch and a quarter and I'm putting a line there and now what I'm going to do is straighten up this edge to that point and straighten up this edge to that point and it will just make it look a little bit um, better in my mind it just works out whoops lots of seam allowances there. So now we've got kind of a scallop there. And you can certainly do what you want. Maybe you want it rounded there, whatever. I'm just going to add a point there because I'm, I've got points all the way through. Um, so that's how I have um, finished off and gotten that wonky little corner to work out. So this is a very, very simple way to create a scalloped border and to put it on your quilt. You'll see my um, basting stitches are there. I'm going to have to get those removed. But um, I love how it turned out. I'm very excited to get this quilted. There's a lot of negative space in this quilt that I'll be able to enjoy having fun doing some fun uh, ruler work. I think I'll do a lot of echo quilting and some paisleys and feathers in the center of this quilt. Thank you so much for joining me today as we finished up our 
fun crumb quilt medallion quilt here. Um, I really enjoy doing every aspect of it. It's a lot of fun. I hope that you'll try a project just like this. And I would love to hear from you. Please leave a comment below. And if you do enjoy the content that I provide, please don't forget to like and subscribe. If you're new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe and share my videos with your friends and family and those quilters that you know that might enjoy this. I really do appreciate that. I hope within the next couple of months, I will get a number of the quilts that I have put together this past year quilted. I have been working on customer quilts and I really do want to get to some of my own quilts. So um, I'll hope, hopefully I'll be able to do a, a video for you of a, a trunk show of all of those quilts that we've done this year. Hope you've enjoyed this crumb quilting series. I do have more crumb quilting projects coming up that will be for Christmas, so stay tuned. And until next time, Happy quilting.